in that case the database that i want to show you is the is one of the websites in the nist website so it's called webbook.nist.gov Wait, let me see if this is the one okay great uh, chemistry fluid okay i'm just going to paste it in the chat box in case you want to visit it now All right, so how is this uh, a useful website? Now here, <laughs> you can obtain the thermodynamic properties of different fluids. So what can you obtain from here? You can obtain density, specific volume, specific heat at constant pressure, specific heat at constant volume, Enthalpy, entropy, internal energy, speed of sound, thermal conductivity, viscosity, blah, blah, blah. Now, you have not studied all these properties. You So far, you have only learned about density and specific volume. Uh, maybe you have not talked about the specific heat at constant pressure and at constant volume as well. So that, will, that we will discuss uh, in the next uh, CLO. Similarly, enthalpy, entropy, etc. Okay, but even uh, density, specific volume, pressure, temperature, this is enough for us to use this database. So what you can do first is you select the species of interest. Now there are several options here. Do you want to, start, uh, to know the property of water, nitrogen, hydrogen, parahydrogen, deuterium, oxygen, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there are many. Okay, it's a collection of different molecules. So let's say we select uh, water. Then you have to choose the units of the properties. So the temperature will be, let's say, in terms of Celsius. And you can choose among these uh, units of uh, pressure. Say you'll choose megapascal. Pressure is in megapascal. Okay, density. Okay, I'm going to choose kilogram per meter cube. And energy. Uh, I'll change from default. So here it is kilojoules per mole. I'm going to change it to kilojoules per kg. And I don't really care about the velocity, viscosity, and surface tension, but just to complete this process, I will choose the standard units. So for velocity meter per second, for viscosity pascal seconds, and surface tension Newton per meter. Then you have to choose the desired type of data. Now, here you have to think a little bit, but you have to be aware, okay? It's not just like choosing the units. Isothermal properties. Isothermal means constant temperature. Now, if you recall your uh, PV diagram, if you recall your PV diagram, okay, so there were constant temperature lines in the PV diagram. So when you select isothermal properties, you are saying that temperature is constant. So what's going to happen is when I generate the data later on, I will get the set of pressure and specific volumes along this type of line okay so along the line which represents a constant value of temperature okay so 
if let's say this line corresponds to temperature equals to 100 degrees Celsius, then I will get all the values of these pressures and specific volumes. If I choose temperature equals to 200 degrees Celsius, then I may get all the pressure and specific volumes on this line. Okay, so that will be the effect of choosing isothermal properties. So when you are making this choice, you should imagine the phase diagram. If you choose isobaric properties, then you will be specifying the value of pressure. Okay, so that now when you specify the value of pressure, you can imagine the TV diagram. Right in the TV diagram, you have constant pressure lines. So let's say this is the this sketch here, this line represents the T and V at P equals to at P equals to say 100 kilopascal. So if you would specify P equals to 200 kilopascal, then you may get all these values of temperatures and specific volumes. Okay, and similarly, isochoric means constant specific volume. So that will give you the PT diagram, for instance. All right, so first you have to be aware of the meaning of these words. Isothermal means constant temperature. Isobaric means constant pressure. And isochoric means constant volume. So let's note that down. Isothermal means T equals to constant. Isobaric means P equals to constant. And isochoric means P equals to constant. All right. So let's say we pick isothermal properties. All right, so leave this as default. Now press to continue. Now, since we picked isoth <coughs> isothermal properties, okay, it will ask us to specify the value of temperature. So you can choose any value between. 0.01 Celsius and 1001.9 Celsius. So let's say I choose 80 Celsius. Then you have to specify the range of pressure. So maybe, okay, I put zero. It doesn't matter. I mean, really, it depends on the data which is already stored in the database. Okay, so pressure, low pressure, minimum it says is zero megapascal. High Pressure is, okay, what does it say? There is a star here, you should read. The maximum pressure limit is the lowest of the following values. So it's gonna choose either 1000 megapascal or the pressure at which the density of 1332 point, sorry, 1332 kilogram per meter cube is reached. All right, I'm just going to put 1000 megapascal, I mean, or maybe that is too much. I'll just put, uh, let's say, 10 megapascal. And now for the increment, so this is the delta P, right? So, for example, here, since I have selected isothermal, I know that I'm going to get uh, this type of line, yeah? So, that pressure increment means uh, what are the what is the interval at which I want to do the calculation? Again, think about this uh, diagram. Sorry, the table. Think about the table. And look, if we go to the saturated water pressure entry, there is 30, 40, 50, 75, 100. So the gap between these two successive numbers is the pressure increment. Like for example, here, they have chosen a pressure increment of 25 kilopascal. 
100, 125, 125, 150, 150, 175, 175, 200. So at every 25 kilopascal, you are calculating the thermodynamic properties. Now, I could do the same or I could choose, what is this, 0 0.001. So that is 0 0.001 megapascal. That is one kilopascal. Okay, I could choose one kilopascal or I could choose 10 kilopascal. Okay, let's say I choose 10 kilopascal as my steps. Okay, then I press for data. All right, it generated something. Now, what is this a straight line? I was telling you that uh, we will get this type of line. But we did not get that line. We just get a straight line. Now, what is the what, what is the reason? First of all, you need to see what is in the y-axis here. It's, it's a density versus pressure plot. What were we discussing? We were discussing pressure versus specific volume. So you have to change the axes. So in the vertical axis, I'm going to put pressure. And in the, sorry, in the vertical axis, sorry, in the vertical axis, I'm going to put pressure. And in the horizontal axis, I'm going to put uh, volume, meter cube per kg. Okay, so I got this. This looks weird. Now, what is this? We have to understand it. So the red is vapor. So I'm guessing that somehow this red corresponds to this part because it is vapor. And this blue line here corresponds to this part, which is liquid. So it says blue is liquid, but the shape is different. I mean, I was saying it, there will be an incline and there will be another incline. There will be a horizontal line in between. Well, there is a horizontal, I mean, line in between. You can imagine, you can connect these two, but you know, this is a vertical line. This is a horizontal line. So what is happening? And how can we sort this out? Now, this is one of the things that you will have to deal with. And how will you deal with it? What you will do is you will download the data. So there is download data. You download the data. Now, even this is a chaos. So what you can do is wait, let's go back. What is this view data in HTML table? Okay. So there are two possibilities, guys. Either you download the data in your desktop, it's a CGI file. Wow. Okay. Now, I don't know how to play with the CGI file. I can uh, try to figure it out, but maybe that is not necessary. What I can do is I can just view the data in HTML table. And you should copy and paste this data in your Excel file. And then you should replot it. And there will be some questions that I will ask uh, based on uh, this data. Now, there are the many things here. You can notice that there is temperature and the temperature is 80 degrees Celsius for all the rows because you set the temperature at 80 degrees Celsius. It's an isothermal data, right? So for all the rows, the temperature is 80 degrees Celsius. 80 degrees Celsius all the way down. Okay. Now, pressure is changing. So temperature versus pressure, Tem okay, pressure and volume. Okay, so if you, if you just take this pressure and volume column 
and you plot you will get this you will get this if you just plot pressure and volume and maybe you have to scale it properly so that you will see this shape by default you are not seeing this shape so this is one of the interesting things that uh, i will uh, guide you to do through the lab handouts okay so when you plot pressure versus volume you should see that type of shape now there are other properties also listed here but we have not studied them and it also tells you the phase right like for example when the pressure is all these values so basically this whole row corresponds to vapor so what it is saying is okay pressure and volume so vapor 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 see we have only one two three four vapor points so what this is saying is you are only getting four data points here four data points here and then it's all liquid 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 see all liquid all liquid all the way down Hey, wait a second. I think I did not say it properly. You're getting only four vapor points, right? One, two, three, four. So those four vapor points correspond to here. So you have only four points here. These are the vapor points because this is liquid, right? This is not vapor. So all your vapor points are here. So in, in you are you will get one, two, three, four data points here. Now you have many data points for liquid. So liquid, 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 all, I think everything is liquid here. Liquid, liquid, yeah, all the way up to liquid. So you are getting many data points here, here. Now let me see other things I can make out. Yeah, and you see the space, there is a, there is a, a jump this is the specific volume okay at uh, 0 0.047414 pressure megapascal and the temperature is 80 degrees celsius now the temperature and pressure are same value as before but the specific volume has significantly decreased what does this show okay well, this shows this is your new f so this specific volume that we are highlighting here corresponds to this new f and suddenly there is a jump means phase change has occurred right so now the next value is 0 0.0010291 actually you have to plot this and then only it will be clear i don't want to make any conclusions here yet okay i actually yeah so you you have to plot it and then it will be clear where this point falls in this uh, plot will be clear only after making a graph okay so the procedure to generate the data is very simple but to analyze the data will require some uh, thinking and that is what you will have to do in lab 2 and i will share the handout with you either by later today or tomorrow Okay, uh, do you guys have any comments on this? Okay, maybe you will uh, have some questions when you actually have to do this exercise. So that's all I have for today. I will stop recording now. <laughs>